John, would you come forward and lead us in the pledge, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, John. Before we get started, uh, I know some of you might be here to talk about what took place on uh, March 15th at the school. Uh, at this meeting, we cannot discuss that uh, because it is an ongoing investigation of our, our Sheriff's Department and Police Department. If you do have concerns, uh, questions, solutions, whatever, please contact them with your ideas uh, at this moment in time. And I know down the road, we will be discussing uh, security and, and we will have those conversations. But as of tonight, we cannot do that. Also, the reason is uh, we will probably have an expulsion hearing. And in order for this board to be the jury, which we are during expulsion hearings, we have to stay as impartial as we possibly can. And uh, so we don't wanna have too many facts or too many non-facts or whatever out there to influence our, our vote. So uh, just so you know, uh, we will not discuss that tonight. Uh, I did wanna add one other thing on communication uh, to that point. I was told that parents received information about the lockdown from other parents or other people or friends or whatever before they not were notified by the school. The reason being, uh, as, it, as this was unfolding that day and the lockdown was there, uh, our administration, our police department, our sheriff's department, uh, our staff, we're pretty busy. And so until we had some facts, uh, nothing was put out. But at the time uh, that we could release information, it was put on our website. It was put on the Facebook website. Uh, it was broadcast on KASL radio. I, I understand that it was also broad, broadcast on the new newsletter journal podcast. Uh, I was informed that every staff member and every student received an email. And I assume that if a student receives an email, the guardian or the parents receive the email, email too. If you did not receive an email on it, um, please contact the school and make sure they have the right one so they can, can get you that information. Uh, and I just want to state as a result of that day, Everyone, and I do mean everyone, walked out of the school. And it doesn't get any better than that if you, if you listen to what's going on in this country. So uh, we need to be very inspired by that and, and uh, thank God for that, that result. So um, just wanted to put that out there before we went on with, with the rest of the meeting. Uh, before you, uh, you have an agenda. I have no changes to the, the new printed agenda. It's a little different than what was put on the website. Uh, unless you, oh, you, okay. Well, the new new one, anyway, it's a little different than the first one that was put out. So uh, is there any, yes. Mr. Chairman, I believe Brad had an addition under new business. Do you have an addition, Brad, under new business? Termination. That's on there. That's on there. It's it's C. It's D. D under. Oh, oh. I thought you said you were putting it. Sorry. Okay. That's all I did. 
Could I have a motion to approve the agenda? Move to approve. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the agenda. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Is there any recognitions tonight? Randy. On behalf of the um, elementary staff, I'd just like to thank the board for dinners during parent-teacher conferences. They wanted me to make sure you all knew that was greatly appreciated. So, You're more than welcome. Thank you. Go ahead. All right. I want to recognize some of our Special Olympics athletes. They traveled to Jackson um, the 14th, 15th, and 16th to compete. So here... So just some results for you guys. Um, Cody Stith walked away with one silver medal and two bronze. Daniel Bickford came away with three gold medals. Matthew Gallagher came away with three bronze medals. And then at our area games, Rena Gallagher came away with three gold medals. So some, some really positive things came out of that and that experience. And so a huge thank you goes out to um, Chad Austinson, Candy Stanton, Sally Cord, and then um, each student took a parent to Jackson with them and, and made that experience really memorable. Congratulations to them. Yes. I'd like to add to that, that Chad wanted to make sure that the board knows, or the board knows that he, they would love to have a board member come next year. So he said, even after a very long, hard basketball season and going straight to that after, it was just one of the most heartening experiences he had had. So somebody's got to go skiing next year. Okay. Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have several. I would, of course, echo the elementary school. We really appreciate uh, you guys buying the meals. And I, I gave you that card earlier from the staff. We appreciate that. Um, I would even tell you this, uh, Haley Hemrick and her Empowering Teens Impact Group, uh, the Wednesday of parent-teacher conferences, the students, and with Miss Haley's guidance, uh, made breakfast burritos, had like a fruit spread and everything else. That, that morning after the first night of conferences is pretty tough. And so we really appreciate uh, the kids and, and everybody at Double Ace is taking care of us that way. Um, moving on, uh, we've talked a lot about uh, the sub situation and sub shortages and everything else. I would actually like to recognize a sub, Vonda Emmert, who's of course been very busy uh, everywhere helping out. We had a new substitute teacher in our building uh, a couple of weeks ago um, and Vonda was there as a substitute as well. Um, and I got to kind of watch Vonda give the tour and the law of the land and just um, it was like she was a staff member. She was training this this new gal up. Um, and it, it was just really it was fun to see because I really do think our subs are, are really a part of our team. And, and especially when you're in the building as much as folks like Vonda, um, it was just really cool to see. So I really appreciate that. Um, I would recognize Leslie Morris. I'm going to hand you guys my one copy, but you got to give it back. Um, Leslie Morris is a special education teacher in the middle school. She did uh, a training, I would say, with our, our our paraprofessionals and our other teachers in the building that helped provide accommodations during the YTOP test. Um, like anything else with WDE, there's a lot of rules and regulations and everything that you have to follow. Um, and I thought Leslie went above and beyond um, condensing that information for those folks and doing it in a presentation. And I'm handing that because those are the books that she made um, just because that's what she thought would be the best way to, to get this information across. So everybody got their own copy and everything else. So um, just kudos to her for making sure that we're following all the rules. And then, of course, I've got visitors here um, from back to back regional champs at the at the science fair. I'm going to let Mrs. McCormick and everybody talk more about them. But uh, I'm telling her she's building a dynasty. It is, <laughs> it's back to back. And she can tell you more about their all expense paid trip to Washington, D.C. coming up at the end of April, too. But I'll let them do more of that. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. <clears throat> That's all. All right, there we go. Thank you. Uh, first, I'd like to recognize our Mrs. Engel and our FBLA members. Uh, we had 18 students qualify for national FBLA. Um, so I'm going to read those off because I believe that's a worthy rec worth recognition and taking the time to do that. So in community service, Haley Bistrom, Amelia Jensen, and Mackenzie Rose. In FBL, and I don't know what that acronym means, but it might be future business leader, um, Colton Vanderpool Mobley. In graphic design, 
Eli Morrill, Zachary Orsborn, and Thatcher Trough Grubin. In hospitality and events, Ava Williams and Andrea Garcia. In the introduction to business, Eli Morrill and Thatcher Trough Grubin. In marketing, Casey Matthews, Holden McConkie, and Hogan Tystad. In web design, Heath Hinkle and Trinity Schroyer. In business law, Heath Hinkle. In human resources, Gabby McVeigh. In word, Caleb Hoover. In healthcare administration, Gabby McVeigh. In spreadsheet application, Caleb Hoover. In organizational leadership, Colton Vanderpool Mobley. And in network design, Presley Fitzwater and Kyra Yanchunas Gonzalez. And so, some of those were repeats, but there are 18 total students that qualified. So God bless Mrs. Engel and our trip to National F FBLA. Um, and then also we had some success at state FCCLA um, as state placers um, in the category of professional presentation. Amisha Cummings and Shaylin Jerry placed third. In that same category, Samuel Scribner and Aaron Chantel placed fourth. And qualifying for nationals in that category was Alyssa Covey. And so a lot of success for those students in those programs. And thank you to Mrs. Engel and Mrs. Scribner for their advisement and leadership in those. Uh, also wanted to recognize some staff members. Um, we had the ACT this week uh, for all juniors. It's a statewide test for all the juniors. And some of our staff members got together and, and fed all the students breakfast, um, had all sorts of things for them to eat. Um, Mr. Konsman had the gym open for students to shoot hoops, get the blood moving a little bit before the test so they didn't just roll in with their eyes still half shut. Um, so those staff members were Mrs. Trofgruben, Mr. and Mrs. Scribner, Mrs. Unterseer, Mrs. Reed, and then Mr. Consman in the gym. So I thought that was a, a cool way for those students to have an opportunity to be successful. Um, also, shout out to Mrs. Branscombe for all the work that she does coordinating all of the ACT parts and pieces. I know that's a lot on her plate and she does just a great job with it. She's got some very good systems in place. And so uh, thanks to her. And then I spoke about the senior fun day um, with all the leftover money from the prom that didn't quite happen as planned last year. And so Mrs. Unterseer and Mr. Konsman hosted a senior fun day this week, and um, I think everybody had a pretty good time. So I know that was a lot, and I have a typed list for you, CeeLo, um, but thank you. Thank you. Any other recognitions? Okay, we'll move on then. Uh, visitors comments, Shanae. Mr. Chairman, this is Forrest. He's training. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, I might do that. Let's pull it out. Okay, this is Forrest. We're training him to be a therapy dog. Um, and I believe the policy and procedure and the waiver were sent out to you guys. Um, so that was the procedure and policy that was um, accepted by Western County Health Services for him to come in. And then of course we see some special ed kiddos through physical therapy. So what I am asking is if it would be okay. <laughs> he likes to say hi. Um, <laughs> if he could come in and work with those students. Um, I did send that waiver out. We can make adjustments if we need to, to fit it more towards the school. Of course, he would still be contracted under Weston County Health Services. But if you would like to meet him, this is Forrest and he is a one-year-old golden doodle. He has passed his canine good citizens and so, now he just has to pretty much get intern hours for the AKC therapy dog. And then he has to do a few different tests for Therapy Dog Alliance. He's a very good neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> what? So you need our approval? Is that what you're asking for? Yes, on the waiver if I can give that to the parents for the students I'm working with directly. 
Can I have a motion to that effect? Second. Been moved and seconded to uh, allow you to have the, what, what's the name of the dog? Forest. <laughs> Forest. As a therapy dog for PT. Um, is there any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Thank you. Post. Congratulations. Thanks. We may need him. But I can't make that recommendation. Thank you for not listening. You were going to. No, I can't. No, you can't. Not that we're directly related, but indirectly related. Yeah. Not to the dog. <laughs> Mrs. Mc. Ms. McCormick, Dr. Crow, yeah, okay. please. <laughs> All right, well, you guys know I'm a science teacher at the middle school, Dr. Calgrove is as well. For the past five years, I, I must have received an email from somebody and said, you want to do the national science quiz bowl? And I didn't even know what it was, but I'm like, sure, let's try it and see if I can get some kids interested. So for five years, I have convinced some kids to come in and spend some lunch times practicing questions. And we have gone to a competition in Casper, except for the COVID year, you know, then we had to do some Zoom things. But last year, um, we had a team that won in Wyoming. So Wyoming will take up to 12 teams. And last year we took, oh gosh, we took three teams. Three of the 12 were from Newcastle Middle School. And then this year we took two teams. And so this team, um, ended up, we, uh, let me think. So we did the semifinals against the other Newcastle team. And that was a super close, almost <laughs> tears. Yeah. And then, um, but they came out victorious. And then we had a really easy win against a Sage Valley um, school in order to win our championship. So I'm going to introduce the team. So John Sandrini is an eighth grader. Sean Paul is an eighth grader. Ethan Parsons is a seventh grader. Annika Olson is a seventh grader. And Liam Novak is a sixth grader. And I like to get kids from each grade because they're all studying different things in science at different times. So some things are fresh in their mind. And the science quiz bowl, the way that it works is it's kind of like Jeopardy. So they go head to head, face, you know, face off with another team. So the they'll be they'll be sitting with a buzzer. And then the other team is ready and they'll get a question. And then the first one to buzz in, they only get five seconds to buzz in. And then they win four points if they get that question right. And then they go on to a bonus question. And if they, then they get 20 seconds to talk it out. And if they get that right, they'll, they get uh, how many points? 10 points. Okay. Anyway, a little more information about it. The Science Quiz Bowl is an academic competition. It's hosted by the U.S. Department of Energy. And it tests students' knowledge in all areas of math and science. So energy, all areas of math, physical science, life science, earth and space. Um, our team is going to join 49 other middle school teams in Washington at the end of April. And it's an all expense paid trip. So we don't have to pay for a thing. We just have to get on the, we have to leave Newcastle at like two o'clock in the morning or something to get on a plane. Okay. And then we don't come back until like 10 o'clock and wrap it the night before we have to be in school the next day. And Annika has perfect attendance and this is stressing her out a little bit. <laughs> How is she going to make all the things happen and still get perfect attendance? She can do it. Okay. So I already told you we've been preparing at lunchtime. So I convinced Dr. Calgrove to come on board so that he could help take a lunchtime practice this year. So that's been great. And then he also gets to go to DC. So I thought I wanted to just do a little practice question. I'll make it super quick. I don't want to take a lot of time, but so you get an idea of how it works. All right. So this is what we practice at lunch. So the kids come in, they would have a buzzer. So we set up a buzzer system. And then I had another volunteer, a girl that came in and helped volunteer take the time and stuff. So here's your question. Act like you've never heard this before. Okay. Life science, short answer. Of the four general types of biological molecules, proteins, carbohydrates, lipids, and nucleic acids, which one typically accounts for the majority of dietary calories in the human diet? Ethan. 
carbohydrates is correct. Carbohydrates. And then they earn their bonus question. Life science, short answer. Starch and glycogen are polymers of what simple sugar? John. Glucose. Glucose is correct for another 10 points. Okay. Anyway, that's kind of how it works. And they would be going against the other team. So it's like a, a rush to get the buzzer. And if they miss it, then the other team gets a chance to guess. So sometimes there's some strategy when the questions are really hard that you hope they'll miss it. And then maybe you'll get a better chance. The odds are better. And some of them are multiple choice too. So I wanted just to give the kids a chance to tell you some of their favorite experiences so far. And John Sandridi wanted to share something, right? Do you still? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, it was a really stressful slash fun uh, competition. Uh, all the team did great. Uh, Ethan was on fire some of the last rounds. Um, one story I'd like to focus on particularly that she uh, briefly touched down on was the uh, when we went against our own team in semifinals. And prequel to this, uh, we actually went against them, and it was a close one, but we did come out on top. Um, so I kid you not, the whole time we were underneath their score till the very last – the last question. So the last question where we managed to get uh, both the um, toss up and bonus question correct, which put us over by two points, which is incredibly hard to do. So that was pretty fun. And we all lost it. Um, as much as I don't want to say this, um, I actually fainted. <laughs> so, yeah, that was. It was really high drama. It, it was. In a really fantastic good way. So, are you sure about that? <laughs> I thought it was. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else want to share anything? No. Okay. The, I, the two I, lunches I a week from like November on. These kids are practicing. Yeah. And then when you win, I'm like, oh, they keep it coming. More lunches together. <laughs> oh, Liam wants to share. Okay. So in the finals, um, there was one question. I knew the answer. I buzzed to well, I buzzed and I blurted out on accident. Um, and I apparently didn't even buzz. Ethan actually buzzed first, but I did have the right answer. But then they get, they give but, the team four points for you blurting. Yeah, right. I, we had to learn yeah, that, that did happen. Way. Yeah. Anyway, that's all right. Sometimes you got to learn the lesson the hard way. <laughs> We're working on that. Anyway. And I would like to thank both of our science teachers. They are amazing. They're giving up their lunch time. Uh, they've helped us a lot. Uh, Mrs. McCormick has um, coached us fairly. I don't know. <laughs> fairly? <laughs> I don't know. But fairly. Fairly. But, fairly. but yeah, um, they put in a lot of work, and I think. They probably are some of the coolest teachers in the <laughs> middle school. <laughs> Thanks. What days do you practice? We practice on Tuesdays and Wednesdays at lunch. The kids go and they bring their lunches and then we stuff it in as fast as we can and then get to the questions. <laughs> they, they say that the more questions that you practice, the better your chances are of winning. It's sort of jeopardy. You know, you just got to keep hearing questions and getting things wrong and figuring out what's right. Sometimes a good guess for the game, right? <laughs> <laughs> but when you should we go congratulate these kids? We're going to take a, a short break here to congratulate the, the contestants. Is there any other visitor comments tonight? Yeah. 
Seeing none, we'll move on. Action items, the consent agenda. Move to approve the consent agenda. Second. It's been moved and seconded to, to approve the consent agenda. Is there any discussion on them? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. There is no old business, so we'll move on to new business. Uh, initial contract teachers recommendation, Brad. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as discussed in executive session, I would recommend uh, to the board the approval of the initial contract teachers um, as stated earlier in executive session for the 23-24 school year. Move to approve. Second. It's been moved and seconded to, uh, it's been recommended to approve the initial contract teachers as stated in the executive session earlier. Is there any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Continuing contract teachers. Mr. Chairman, thank you. I would recommend to the board uh, those uh, that were discussed um, in executive session for continuing contract status uh, for the 23-24 school year. Uh, we, have, we have to pull one out. I'm sorry. Can I get my list back? Thank you. So I would... Um, I would recommend to you Natasha Hebering, uh, Amber Murphy, and Jill Pischke. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve. It's been moved and seconded to approve Natasha, Amber, and Jill. I just used their first names. But uh, for continuing contract status, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. And Mr. Chairman, I would also recommend to you, may, may I use the full name or you want me to go first name? Full name. Okay, I would recommend to the board, uh, Hannah Cummings uh, for the 23-24 school year and also granting her continuing contract status. Move to approve. There's a second. Second. Mr. Chair. Yes. I will be abstaining from the vote. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Non-tenured staff recommendation. Mr. Chairman, I would recommend the following uh, for continuing uh, in the 23-24 school year for the non-tenured certified staff. That would include Sally Hoover, Nikki Bloom, Scott McGuire, Jolisa Wainscott, Candace Watt, Aaron Pazinski, Mike Gregory, and Crystal Benson. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Second. It's been moved and seconded to uh, approve the non tenured certified staff for the 23 24 school year. And I'm not going to list them again as Brad listed. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Also, Mr. Chairman, I would make the recommendation uh, for Alice, Allison Farella, again, for the 23-24 uh, school year as a non-tenured certified staff member. Move to approve. Is there, Chair. is there a second? Just a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve Allison Farella uh, as a non-tenured certified staff. Uh, for the 23-24 school year. Now. Oh, no. Now. No. Mr. Chair, I abstain from this vote. Mr. Chair, I abstain from this vote. Thank you. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. And, and just, would you read the, the names of the first five? Brad, please. 
point. Sure, so you didn't read them. Um, for uh, their years of service, so Bailey Whitney, Betsy Colgrove, and Louise Parsons completed their first year. Would you like me to pause there, Mr. Chairman? No, we voted on them already. Okay. And then I would also uh, recommend uh, Brandy Marshall, who is on her second year, which will be moving into her third year next next school year. Thank you. We'll move on to termination of classified employee. Mr. Chair, I recommend to the board um, the termination of a classified employee. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion. There's a second? Second. So I'm moving and seconded to terminate a classified employee. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Consolidated grant application. Mr. Chair, thank you. And I recommend to the board uh, the approval for the proposal for both completion and submission of the consolidated grant. Move to approve. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded to uh, approve the proposed proposal to complete and submit the consolidated grant application. Uh, is there any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Classified resignation. Mr. Chair, I recommend to the board uh, the resignation of Keith Plowman as a maintenance technician and permission to post. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the resignation of Keith Bauman uh, as a maintenance technician and to post the position. Is there any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Certified resignation. Mr. Chair, if I could, I just got to add just a comment to, to the Plowman resignation. Uh, Keith's been with us a long time and he's a very stoic individual. My understanding on the last day, the elementary staff and students lined up uh, to give him a high, high five, farewell, thank you. And he enjoyed it so much he went back for a second round. <laughs> Great. And thank him for the years of service. Okay. Certified resignation, Brad. Mr. Chair, at the end of the 22-23 school year, I would ask the board to accept the resignation of James Stith as a high school science teacher and permission to post. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I move to approve, and I want to thank Mr. Stith for um, just revolutionizing our science department here. I think the things he's done has been incredible and he'll be incredibly missed. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded to accept the resignation of James Stith as a high school science teacher uh, and to post the position and recognize him for all the things he's done in the science department. Any other discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Certified transfer. Mr. Chair, I would ask the board <clears throat> to accept the transfer of Devin Dickey from a fifth grade teacher to the fourth grade for the 23-24 school year. Second. It's been moved and seconded to uh, approve the certified transfer of Devin Dickey from fifth grade to fourth grade teacher. Is there any discussion? Mr. Chair. Yes. I, I just got a question. Um, fairly new at this. It's a two-part question. If a staff member wants to transfer um, and they're allowed it, or I guess there's an open position and other ones want to transfer, how do we determine who gets it and who doesn't? And what we look at, um, it's up to the individual principal to, to grant that. 
um, a lot of it is based on what the student needs are and then the skill set of that teacher. Um, that would be my suggestion. Uh, I mean, um, there's not a, I mean, I guess there has been times in which we have not granted the transfer, but in general, we probably wouldn't bring that recommendation to the board if we didn't think it was good for students. That is your question? Yeah. Okay. Is there any other discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Certified resignation. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, at the conclusion of the 22 23 school year, I would recommend to the board to accept the resignation of Travis Untershear as a high school special education teacher and permission to post. Is there a motion? Second. And moved and seconded to accept the resignation of Travis Undershear um, and to post the position. Is there any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Certified transfer. And again, going back to um, the trustee's question prior to this, so I would recommend to the board uh, the transfer of Bailey Whitney from a special education teacher um, to a general education elementary teacher to be determined um, as we look at what the student needs are coming in for next fall. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded to... Um, Accept the tra certified transfer from Bailey Whitney to from special ed to general ed uh, at the elementary and to determine by the needs of the students next fall. Yes. And just to clarify this for my purpose, um, K is taken care of. That's why we're not posting the position on this one, right? K, the next one is why we're not posting this, correct? Okay. Is there any other discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Certified recommendation. Mr. Chair, I recommend to the board the approval of uh, <laughs> Ashley Johnson as a special education teacher. It's been moved and seconded to um, Approve the certified recommendation for Ashley Johnson as a special education teacher. Um, I'm assuming at the elementary school. Um, is there any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. We're down to reports. Um, no report, Randy. No report. Uh, oh, ho, ho, ho. Mr. Bartlett, you're on the spot. I'm gonna put the other one on you then. Um, no, all I had was I was gonna tell you parent teacher conferences went well. I know you guys were there. Um, I think from what I understand, we didn't fully get to connect with with two families. Um, so we didn't get hundred uh, percent this spring semester, but again, with all the changes that we've made, uh, it works a lot better and, and we get a lot of conversations with, with families at home. So that was good. And then Mr. Hoffman will talk about the uh, trip to Shattern State College the other day and, and the teacher fair. For the record, I didn't talk about it. Any questions from Mr. Bartley before he gets the mic away? <laughs> okay, okay. All right, thank you. I'm not gonna lead with the teacher fair, but I'll lead with just the ACT is completed for general education students. And so, um, like I mentioned earlier, just thanks to everybody that participated in helping with that. That's a pretty big day and a stressful day for students. Um, but we were able to get it done this week. Uh, Parent teacher conferences were attended, I would say, as generally they are in the spring. Um, as I've told you before, in the, at the high school level in, in the fall, we have a good percentage of parents because we can get the senior parents there to buy their caps and gowns and announcements. And then in the spring, there's not so much of uh, parents coming into that, but we got a hold of most of the ones that we needed to. 
um, and have had some follow-up meetings this week with other parents, but I feel like we were able to get the job done with what we needed. Um, on the 14th of March, uh, the President Seidel from University of Wyoming attended and talked to students about uh, some of the program programming that they had at UW. Um, my big takeaway from that, though, is afterwards, he went and he taught a lesson for 90 minutes in Mr. Beam's classroom on black holes. And so, first of all, I knew nothing about black holes. Now I know a decent amount about, about black holes, but he's an expert in black holes. And it was cool to see that the president of, you know, our only four-year institution in Wyoming um, is passionate about education. When you hear about the president of a college or university, I don't always think of passion for education. And he did a really nice job engaging with the students in that lesson and delivering that information. So um, it was just, it was cool to see, to put, put a face to the name and then also personality to the name that I've seen quite a bit. So it was a thank you to him. Um, I'm not going to steal one from Gabby since she's here, but so I'll, I'll let her go on one that I was going to talk about. Um, then teacher fairs, um, went to Black Hill State University um, earlier this month and then went to Shattern State College um, last week with Mr. Bartley here. Um, both We're both Shattern State alums, so we were thinking that it was going to be a better teacher fair than at um, Black Hill State University. Um, but unfortunately, I think the game that's now being played when you go to those events are that you're recruiting student teachers. You're not recruiting somebody that you're going to hire right away. Um, you're recruiting student teachers because the individuals that are student teaching right now, they already have jobs. Um, one of my friends from college is a math professor at Shadron now, and all of the students that he taught who are math teachers, they already had jobs lined up. So turns out they weren't at the teacher fair. And so we talked to a lot of sophomores and juniors in college um, who are going to be student teaching next year. And so we switched gears, I would say, through it and really started to try to get them in our doors so that if they do student teach here in Newcastle, um, we can learn a lot about them, a lot more than you can learn in an interview, and also have the opportunity to see if, you know, Newcastle is the community for them at the same time. And so that's, uh, I think it turned out positively. We've actually been contacted by one of those individuals already who's looking to student teach in math and business next year. Um, so hopefully we can lock her down as a student teacher and then see if she's a good fit in our district long term. And if there's a spot for her, um, try to keep her around. And so it's it's definitely a different game than, you know, however long ago when I graduated. Um, and with that, um, I'll turn it over to whoever's next or if there's any questions. Sorry. Any questions? Thank you. Teresa, you want to go? OK, Gabby, you want to go? Is that Sonia back there? Yeah. How come she sits back there where I can't ever see her? Okay. Gabby, if you'd go. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, what I have today, it's a little bit repetitive of last time, but however, we are having our blood drive on April 5th. This is from 9 to 2 in our high school library, and this is open to everybody. Our student council will be running that all day, and then fourth hour will be dedicated to cleanup of that blood drive. By talent comes in, they do everything for us. And we just have to make sure that we have permission slips collected and stuff so that we can encourage our student body to save a life. Um, if you guys are interested in that, it is open to all the community. Another thing also, our election packets were due on the 24th, so we are in full swing in that. Next week, we will be doing those through um, Teams, Microsoft Teams, and we will be live streaming to the school. We can also live stream it to you guys, and we will having the we will be having our current executive board ask the upcoming executive board questions about what would they do new, next school year and how they could improve and stuff. And then we will do voting directly after that. And then by the next time that there is another board meeting, we will have those executive office results for you. But that is all I have. Thank you. Any any questions for Gabby? Yes. I'd be curious um, when you guys are done, the numbers you had this year compared to last year for that drive. Yes. There you go. I'd be curious to see the numbers 
with this blood drive compared to last year's or the year before's blood drive that we did? Um, yeah, we are hoping to have um, higher numbers than we did last year. Our numbers last year were not bad, but they definitely could have been better. We had about 18 and typically we have about 24 slots open. Um, however, we did get our materials a week late from by talent due to weather. So um, we just started handing out flyers and stuff to businesses today. So we shall, we'll see how that fills up. Um, one more thing I did forget to add. We sent out our four day weeks school survey and um, I'm not going, I'm going to be completely honest. We did not have great responses and we did not have, we had about a fourth of our senior class population respond. I was not there that day, but I would like to send it out one more time so that we can at least get half of our class to respond. So it's not considered non-response bias. So that is okay. what I have. Any questions for Gabby? Have I missed anybody? Just Bo, sorry. <laughs> I don't know how I missed him. <laughs> well, since I didn't do it last time, I'll do it this time. So um, just, uh, just a few updates on what we got going on. Um, uh, have a lot of bids coming in for uh, high school refresh next year. Um, more than I've had the, the previous four years. So that's good. So that should be pretty competitive bidding. Um, and that's for the laptops for the the high school refresh so all the teachers and students will have new laptops at the high school um and and like i said i sent you guys the rfp as long as it falls within the rfp and there's some different things so um that's good um also had a lot on the servers so that should be pretty competitive too uh, uh finished up the ae install so um really what the last cycle entailed was um putting two ways in the gym we were always able to call the gym but they could never answer so we fixed that and that's all done now. Uh, the only part of that that I have to finish up is doing the SIP trunk, which is tying the phone system to the PA system. So what that does is to give you all calls through phones or you can page through phones and whatnot. So the idea is probably within two weeks, we should have that done. It's kind of a, a mix with AE, Marco and um, range. So we all three get together and engineers get together and we'll get that done. So. Uh, tomorrow, uh, weather permitting, he's going to be here and I think he's going to put the sound system in the boardroom. So that's good news. L when I talked to him on Monday, the PTZ camera wasn't in yet, but I think we're okay. If anything, we can use that until that comes in and he'll come back and install. Um, he, he's going to call me in the morning to make sure he can come down from Sheridan. So, um, also still waiting on quotes to get readers on gyms and the pool, uh, should have those by the end of the week. And we'll probably go ahead and sign off on that and get those off so we can finish up the, the access part of the, the project. Um, and I just never learned. Now I'm looking at doing a DOS system down at the elementary. And what a DOS system is, it's a cell phone booster. And it's a repeater booster. So really, essentially, it's a big antenna that goes on top of the elementary. And, and, and for some background knowledge, the reason we do that is with that metal roof, we get really bad cell phone reception out there. And sometimes um, we have issues with the radios too. So um, we'll look at a DOS system um, and it's it's a big antenna that goes down and it takes all the cell phone um, reception and it kind of broadcasts it through the school. They're kind of like little access points, like little internet APs and it just broadcasts it through. And it'll also work the same way. They'll, they'll, they'll put another antenna off pointed right at the repeater so we get a good signal with our with our handhelds too. So um, hopefully um, by tomorrow, I'll at least have the initial numbers and whatnot and see what that looks like. So okay. if anybody has any questions. Thank you, Bill. Does any board member have a report? Is that what you're gonna do? Or was you asking the question? No, I don't really think it's a report. It's just more of a statement. Okay. Um, after being educated since the last meeting, I would like it to be on the record that I don't think the way we voted at the last meeting on the administrator contracts was correct, and I should have abstained from the entire process as such. Okay. Yes. Um, Mr. Chairman, I attended uh, UW President Seidel's public open house. Um, when he was here and um, yeah, I was, I was pretty impressed with him and 
and we talked about Brad a little. So it was, it was, there was a lot of brown and gold in there. And a lot of people from the community seemed to be really happy to be there too. So it was a very pleasant experience. And I was happy to be invited. Thank you, Brad. Thank you, Dana. Brad, do you have a report? Quick add, um, along with the university visit, I don't know if it was a week before, um, Renee Linsgraf, I believe is how she says her name. So she is a, uh, a professor of, of social sciences and her expertise really is in Wyoming history. She actually came up um, on her way to Deadwood, uh, but she stopped and shared with our fourth graders uh, a little bit about um, famous women outlaws, um, which was also, the, I think, probably grade level appropriate here, but the same content, maybe a different grade level in which she presented um, in Deadwood. So I'd like to to thank her and just a quick, you know, thumbs up, thumbs down. Uh, it seemed like both uh, the students and the staff um, thought it was pretty good as well. Are there any other reports? Okay, future agenda items. Anybody have any future agenda item they'd like to? Just be watching for the Easter Bunny, I guess. Uh, Bo, is Allison on there? Okay. At this point in time, I will ask for a motion to go into executive session uh, to discuss student issue under Wyoming State 16 or Wyoming Statute 16 4 405, little X, little I. I'll make a motion. It's been moved and seconded to go into executive session under uh, student issue, discuss this student issue. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, everybody, for showing up. You can come back. I call the meeting back to order. Can I get a motion? Mr. Chairman, yes. I move to approve the recommendation for expulsion for one calendar year of the student discussed in executive session. Is there a second? All second. It's been moved and seconded to have an expulsion of the student discussed in executive session for one year as recommended by the superintendent. Is there any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. We'll move on to discussion items. Board evaluation. Um, did everybody have an opportunity to go look through the evaluations and which one would they like to use? The big one, the little one? Dana's for the big one, Paul, it doesn't matter. Big one, big one, big one, big one. Okay, I guess we're gonna go with the big one. Okay. So we'll, uh, we'll go through and, and uh, I guess send the, send your results. I don't know how we can send it. CeeLo, is there a way to do that? on email that we can fill that out and send it back to you so you can tally it. We all have a hard copy already. Just drop them off. We could, we could just drop them off. Okay. Uh, and then we can go over them either at the next meeting or the meeting after. I, which, yes, ma'am. I thought we were going to, if we did the big one, we were going to do it in smaller bites. We might, yes. So should we pick a 
Would you like me to go through it and recommend it like a size if we're going to do like one or two sections? Well, I think if we all do the evaluation, when we turn it in, we can say how many we want to do. Gives us an idea. Okay, so you want us to do all of the evaluation yep. and then we'll discuss it in small pieces. Yes. Okay. Are there any questions on that? Okay. Well, before the next meeting, I don't. Give you have to give CELO enough time to put it together. And they have a four day weekend coming up too. I mean, just a thought. Just a Not to put pressure on you for homework, but if, if people need some extended time, what we could do is we'll just put it on the agenda after we receive adequate data so that you can have that conversation on on the areas that you want to hit first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. That way, if not everyone can get it done by next Friday, yeah. Thursday, mm. uh, that's quick. I mean, the, the next board turnaround is fairly rapid. And I think you all have enough to do in your lives. Um, and then, then once everything is gathered, then we could go ahead and move forward if that's okay with you, Mr. Chairman. Or we could put it off until the last meeting in April. And then that gives everybody time to do the whole thing. We'll just, we'll just we'll go over it last meeting in April. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I'm writing. Lost your hope. Exit survey. Um, Did everybody get a chance to look at that? Do they like it, dislike it, changes? Everybody's looking for it. They must not have done it. Homework didn't get done. <clears throat> I know. Well, I just wanted to remind myself. Is that the that's the one we've used in the past, right? Mr. Mr. Chairman. Yes. My my question is this. Could can you please tell us how this has been done in the past and, and have they been shared with the board? So originally, um, 19 years ago, uh, the similar questions I did, I did face-to-face. -face. And then what I would do, I would as a superintendent. And then I would share that with the respective building principals, i.e. directors that were concerned. And if the board wanted the information, I could make that available. Um, with this format, I'm assuming what you're going to want to do is have the form sent out, um, i.e. mailed, or you could do it electronically, either one. And then the individual would have the choice to either respond or not. And then if you wanted it to come to me, uh, if you wanted to come to the board chair, um, it would be whatever you would like. I, I guess the direction's really up to you. Yeah. Well, I do have an idea about that. And um, I would just like it to really be a sit down conversation with people who have decided to leave if they are willing to do that. Um, so what I was seeing, these, these kind of questions, I, I think the questions here are entirely appropriate and can absolutely be helpful. Um, but what I was thinking of, and I, and I'd be happy to give them that ahead of time so they could, you know, weren't just hit with it um, last minute, but to have uh, have um, you or the building principal or both and a board member that the board chooses, and then a board member, the 
person leaving chooses and a staff member the, leave, the person leaving chooses so that it's really a balanced uh, kind of safe place for them to really give us some things that can help us improve. That's really what I want to know here. Um, and I'm assuming um, that there will be some people who don't want to do it and that's fine, but I think it could be a really valuable tool for all of us to learn um, what we can do better. How about with the board's discretion, uh, will we be will form a committee and let them finalize the committee to what they're comfortable with? I mean, maybe they don't want me in that piece. Um, maybe they don't want the building principal. Maybe they don't want a board member. Um, but the face-to-face -face piece always seemed to work the best, or, or at least in my opinion. Because um, a lot of times, if you get stuff in the mail or another email, it's just it's just another email. What's the other board members think? You didn't say that loud well, enough. Go ahead, Paul. I think anytime you can get information as to why somebody is leaving or transferring, whether it's face-to-face -face or email, whatever they prefer, as long as it's the honest feedback, that's the most important thing. So if they feel comfortable talking with somebody, I say, great. If not, send it in via email, whatever makes that person feel comfortable to give us the feedback we need to make this a better place to work, that's what we should be after. And if they want an entire committee to sit there with them and listen, then I would do everything we could to make that possible. <clears throat> if that's what they want, that's what we should try to give them. Because any, any organization is only as good as the people that they have in their employee. And until we get serious about retaining our employees, we're gonna continue to hemorrhage. So whatever it takes to get honest feedback, that's what we need to do. So you're saying basically that you would leave it up to the individual that was leaving, whether they wanted to have a committee or if they wanted to have one person or if they wanted to have whatever. Their choice. Their choice. Okay. Billy? Yeah, just, I, I agree with all that. I mean, the better face-to-face, -face, it um, shows that we're being more proactive. Um, getting out there, getting ahead of the stuff, figuring out, like said, you know, why why are they leaving? It might just be something simple or, you know, it might be a lot more. Okay. Any other board member? Well, what we can ask, I guess, what we could ask the, the people that are retiring or leaving or uh, have turned in their resignation, if if they would do it, which way they would prefer to do it. Brad, can we do that? Is that okay with the board? Yes, Tina. So I'm not necessarily comfortable with just one person doing it, I guess, um, especially if that person is going to be, um, if that person's going to be a board member and only a board member, then I just don't, I don't agree with that. I don't know. Um, and here's here's my thinking. I feel like if I'm sitting there and you're sitting or whoever it happens to be, um, I might hear something different than what you hear. And and I just feel like it's pretty easy to put a twist on something. If you already have a bent that way or you hear something that way or what have you. And I just feel like I'm not comfortable with that, I guess. So you would recommend, I guess your recommendation is that we have one administrator. Just more than one. Just it more than one person, whether it be two school board members. Two to six people. I mean, I, I just don't. You can't have six board members. No, it could no. be staff. It could staff, be an okay. I mean, it could be a variety of people. Okay, well, if you would ask them. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything else on that? And I guess. Okay. Um, 
four day calendar survey that come back pretty much in favor of the four day week, the way I read it. Although part of those were, were students, I seen that just by the comments that they made. Um, so, but it was still pretty overwhelming for the four day week. So where do we wanna go from here? Do we want our administrators to start working on what it may look like, where we wanna go? Yes, sir. Go ahead, Billy. I just want to know how many were students and how many were or parents. Um, we don't know. Because I didn't see we that in here know. at all. Um, and my my only thing is, and I'll just say it, um, you know, when I was a student, I would have absolutely said four day, all day, right? Like, so I don't, I guess I'm not really aware of any students that would say, nope, put me in school five days a week. Not, it, but not, but now as a, as a parent and as an adult working in a five day week, I just, I'm not, I'm still not convinced that a four day week is the best thing for our students. And so um, I, I just really, not that, not that getting information from students isn't important. I'm not saying that at all. Um, but I just know that there's so many, so many things that go into this that that students and that they, they don't even know about. I mean, like our soccer season, we've got six, we've got six games on a Thursday. Is it a Thursday or is it a Tuesday? So, I mean, that's a, so those kids would then end up missing Thursday afternoon and then all day Friday as well. And I just think there's so many things out there that we need to take a look at that that aren't necessarily always things that everybody knows, kids that's, know about. I guess, so. Tina, that's the reason that I would ask that we start, if we're, you know, just based on this little survey, that we go out and ask our administrators and our staff, okay, what what would a four-day week look like at the high school? What would it look at the, like in the middle school? And what would it look like at the elementary school? Would we have to go, example, I'm not saying it would, would we go from the block scheduling to a seven-day period? What would the length of the school day have to be? Uh, what would it do? You know, students now miss a lot of days in the high school for activities. I don't know if it affects them very much, but it would affect somebody at the elementary school or middle school. It very well could. Um, so if we put some of these, these things together that, and I don't want to get re de real detailed at this point in time. And then we could have a community meeting and sit down and, and discuss it with, with adults and, and, and parents and, and let them know what, what the possibilities are. Not that they necessarily have to be that way, but this is the possibilities of what could happen or what may happen. Um, you know, and, and I guess there's no way to tell how many, how many, kids fill this out or or if they did it twice or if they did it three times or whatever there's no way to know that but but that's okay uh the, the results were pretty overwhelming for a four-day week and i agree if i was a student in the high school i'd say four-day week any day of the week and i know i would um yeah billy go ahead um i'll just back up a little bit and quote me if i'm wrong but didn't we say we we're going to put the survey out, see what the results were, and then form a committee to start doing some research on some stuff? Right. I mean, so we, yeah, we can get all the answers and, yeah. and start. I mean, it's not, yeah, we're going to a four day school week, put a committee together, get with the administrative teachers and stuff like that, local daycares and stuff, everybody, and kind of build a plan. Yeah, I think we got to, we got to have some ideas what it's, what it will look like in our community. Other yeah. That doing yeah, I mean, we we don't have to reinvent the wheel, but we need to get a start and be able to get take a, a public meeting out there for everybody to hear. Paul, go ahead. Just to Trustee Chick's point, I don't know about the other ones, but we didn't have any students fill out the survey 
at the middle school or the grade school when we were there. We told their parents to fill it out, and then we asked the students if they wanted to fill out one to get the student survey online or at the school. And we had kids that wanted to, and we also had parents that filled their survey out in front of their students because they wanted to see them cry, which was really funny on a side note. But at least the two times that we did it, we didn't have any students fill out their surveys. It was all parents or grandparents. Brad? Uh, thanks, Mr. Chairman. So on Tuesday, part of our leadership meeting uh, really was to do exactly that. So um, people uh, right now are in favor, but I think education is the next piece. So um, we just chose an example of what a calendar would look like. So you can look at those. I asked each of them to sort of look at their respective buildings and also the directors, um, i.e. because we have heard, you know, from the hourly staff that they would lose hours. And so um, we've begun that process. And really, I think until you get enough information out, whether it be a start time, whether it be daycare, um, how does it affect the high school versus the middle school? What schedule are you going to be on? What does it do to activities? It it It's easy to say I'm in favor of that when you don't really know the scope of what you're in favor of. So hopefully um, we can start this. And again, uh, for us to do the alternative calendar, you have to have two public meetings anyway. So we could continue to put that information out. From those meetings, we can gather information, come back as a team, and and, and basically have answers for those. Uh, the other thing that that you know that I looked at primarily was is I would want something in there that if Tuesday was a snow day, then that Friday of that week actually just becomes you're missing Tuesday. Um, you know, those are the kinds of things that that I look at that would help families. Um, and it definitely helps us with our, our contact time and our teaching time. Um, the other thing that I continue to hear that this may be more of a recruiting tool for staff, because a lot of the millennials uh, that are out there really are more into that kind of a structure. Z's? Oh. <laughs> Yes, it's past nine o'clock. I'm no, it's not. So anyway, um, I, I think we can help with that. Um, again, I think as you receive that information, uh, there's pros and cons still to look at. I mean, when do you start? You know, what does that mean for the route out on 450? When you're done and when does my high school kid get home from activities? You know, those are all things that I think we really need a little bit more information than just the word. Because truly, if you had me in kindergarten, you would have wanted a four-day week from a teaching standpoint. I can guarantee that. Um, so I do think there are some other avenues to look at. Um, again, I think activities has been huge. How does that look with our activities? How do you schedule activities? And as we all know, when you have winners like this, it's really not about your schedule. It's about when Mother Nature is going to allow you to go. Um, and again, other districts have have made that work. It's it's not like we're reinventing the brand new wheel. Um, I, I would want a very strong professional development component to that because we've heard from staff that they need that time. Uh, so I think if you're going to do that for time, we can't be prisoners of time because it would allow you that time if that's one of your goals to look at. So again, that's just a conversation we started on Tuesday. If you have any suggestions, ideas, um, Torrington, I believe, is going to go to the four-day week starting next year. Uh, Glen Rock, uh, I have a bunch of information coming out of Glen Rock as well. Uh, so I don't think we have to invent the wheel. I think we can borrow the best pieces. And at the end of the day, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I mean, um, but I think there needs to be more information. Dana? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. One of the things I'd like to see us do, and I'm pretty sure we could talk him into coming down, is like have Clark Coverly come down and tell us how Weston 7 addressed uh, some of his concerns and issues. We do have some things in, in common with them. Um, other things we don't, but I think hearing from how other districts um, approach some of those problems would be helpful as well. Billy, go ahead, Billy. 
Okay, Jason. I guess aside from that, I mean, like Dana was saying, 20, the last I seen 26 school districts in Wyoming, aside from the newer ones probably are doing it. So, I mean, like Brad said, we're not reinventing the wheel. Obviously we have districts that are doing it. It's working. So uh, it would be interesting to hear from other districts why they're so successful and we just seem to be stumbling over this. Really? Um, this is just to Brad. I do have a copy of the Goshen County calendar, if you want me to send that to you. And to touch on your point, I did talk to them and um, how they they said it's not really a cost effective measurement. They're going to say maybe two to 4% on their budget. The hourly employees, what they decided to do was bring the pairs in on Fridays and they can actually work with the kids that need the help or that want to come in and work with it. Um, so the teachers have their development days and they can do their planning and stuff like that. So that's how they work. Yeah. I guess continue to. Okay. Is there anything else for the four day week? The only thing that I ask is when we're on this, working on it, I'd like the question answered, how is this the betterment for education for children? Because ever since I've been on the board, I've always heard from professors, from other board members, from superintendents, from teachers, the best thing we can do is have them in the classroom. So unless the world has changed more than what I'm aware of. I don't think that philosophy has ever changed, but maybe it has. And so that that's my question. How is that the betterment for education of our children? Um, and I don't mean, I don't, I, even if it's the same, I guess it's okay, but I want to see us improve on, on what we do. So that's, that's my only concern. Yes. I do have one thing to add that um, at the time when it is legally appropriate under future agenda items, can we have an executive session to discuss school safety? Okay. Well, it may not be the next meeting, but yeah, we'll get it on there. Is there anything else to come before the board? Meetings adjourned. I'll call the order the meeting of the West County Rec Board. Do you have an agenda in front of you? Mr. Chairman, I need to approve. Okay. I have a motion to approve and properly seconded the approval of the agenda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, any discussion? Any uh, those in favor say aye. Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Do we have any recognitions? Seeing none, visitor comments. Seeing none, consent agenda, or the action items, uh, consent agenda. We got a motion to approve, properly seconded to approve the consent agenda. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Um, old business. I don't think we have any old business. Um, new business. Okay, so. 
Okay. Hopefully you can hear me. Um, the only things, and I sent you a board report, was the RASDAQ ride is official, and um, I'm meeting with the city Monday because I really want to try to get them full boat on it, and we're just going to supply facilities. I think it's a citywide thing. There's about 250 bicycle riders coming through Sunday, June 4th. And I, my background, and I think I shared that was when I worked for a newspaper in Sioux Falls, I managed a 1200, 1200 person bike ride. So I can help the city plan because I kind of know what it, what it entails. So, and we have, and we have, they have utilized, I don't know how much last several years. Yeah. A small group yeah. comes through every year. Yeah, so. Um, these typically will camp outside or utilize our um mot motels in town okay. in the past they are a very large group and so they do they set up tents one night it was the near tornado night and then since they survived that we were kind enough to not turn off the water sprinklers on the football field right um we didn't think they'd ever come back. I'm sure this is a new generation, um, but this this tends to be a very, very much a, a profit kind of thing for your community with that kinds of numbers. Correct. Yep. And then also, um, the requesting uh, funding for the Friends of the Western County Fair um, in your packet. Uh, the playground set they like to replace um and again i don't know I, I do we have a form i thought there was a form that they fill out and they can the and so you put right so i guess um i would entertain Oh, go ahead, Billy. So I'm going to rely on you, Brad, because Angie's not here. Is our our budget's good? I'm assuming. <laughs> I mean, I, I, last I just he would know what he was doing. Well, I know what we got last. Um, so I know what we have, which is about eighty nine thousand. But we still have four months left, right? Yeah, and that was, you know, wages for lifeguards, utilities, weight room, my wages all come out of that. And I'm not real sure what that is. Yeah. So it seems like a large amount. However, I'm not sure. Yeah. Like if you were in the 5,000 range, that's a lot. So this is as dangerous as Brad LaCroix with technology as Brad LaCroix with budget. So um, I don't think you're, you know, you're not, you're not real flush with money. However, um, there is an opportunity. Um, it just depends on how, how much of an opportunity you probably want to make it. I don't know, Teresa and I spoke the other night. I know they've reached out to other entities. I do not know if any of those entities have have actually made any donations. So I don't know of the 42, six. Um, I don't know what of that, I have no idea where they sit or if, if they could do like a, a matching grant kind of a deal. So in a lot of the recreation grants, they'll say as long as you have a matching side of that, then you you can apply. Um, but if you don't have the match, then you don't go. And I don't know if they've if they've looked at that either. But I, I got to be really careful because I, I do not. I, uh, this is not my area that they appreciate me in. Mr. Chairman, John, uh, I serve on the Powder River Energy Foundation Board. 
and we just uh, donated twenty five hundred dollars from the foundation board, and hopefully, hopefully, we'll get another twenty five hundred dollar match from Basin Electric. So, just to let you know where we're at, uh, or where they're at, uh, I don't know if they'll get the we'll get the match or not. So, they may receive that. Um, um, I, I guess I, you said we had eight thousand dollars left. Eighty nine. Eighty nine thousand. But we still have we still have the wages and everything. Wages still and wages stuff and still. July, July, right? Yeah, July. Could we imagine? How much did we give the Yeah, it's still there. Mr. Chairman, I would move that we give two thousand dollars right now, and I, I think we're. <laughs> hey, I got a motion on the floor and been seconded for two thousand dollars. Any discussion? I guess myself, I would like to see twenty five hundred myself. Twenty five hundred. I just agree that you'll match, Sean. Okay, so we have an we have an amended amount for twenty five hundred dollars. Okay, we have a motion for twenty five hundred dollars uh, to donate to the. West of County Fair, Friends of West County Fair for the new playground equipment. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. One more thing. So the ramp is here, it's built. We have a little issue and I'm working with the vendor. So the skid pad things, were put on and they're falling off as before we even put it in the water. And so I'm trying to rectify with them. Why? Because if they're falling off before we even get them in the water, that's not going to be safe. Right. So. Have they contacted you yet? No, okay. <laughs> but I will stay on them. I think, okay. you know, if anything, I can get more adhesive or I, I don't know if it's because they install, all, they installed it and it was in the pool area when they put the adhesives on. I don't know if that moisture. Yeah, waterproof. exactly. So anyway, I'm yeah, just going to. Yeah. So anyway, that's right. it's built. It's just the, the I think about what we put on our swim blocks like that would be awesome because that stays on. And so anyway, I was a little bummed about that. But we got it here. Yeah. So. Hey, anything else to come before the board? All right, seeing none, I adjourn. Sticks, match box, matching tie to matching socks. You don't know why, but you're really special. To me. match point, match game, you and I are not the same, but I can tell that you're really special. To me. There is something I can give to make you laugh, to help you live. We're the perfect match, and you're really special to me. We're the perfect match, and you're really special to me.